Okay, let's see. So, okay, yeah, uh, formal first slide. Um, I'm going to take you on a walk with me on my struggles, aka project. Um, this uh, is a project that was uh, mainly started by David, uh, David Cuartielles, and I have taken over that as part of my uh, master's thesis, but a bit more context on that. I probably you're already, already aware of who David is. He's one of the Arduino co-founders, and he's also an interaction design researcher and lecturer in the Malmo University that is based in Sweden. And in my case, I'm not so known, <laughs> uh, Judith Martinez Villadangos. I'm uh, finishing my master's in embedded systems, and I am currently the team lead for the customer experience team. I am uh, Spanish born and uh, based in Sweden. Um, yeah. So let's get to the whole deal. First of all, uh, let's uh, start with the old tech part, uh, break the whole uh, talk down. Uh, in this case, old tech, I am referring to the SDI 12 standard, which is, uh, it includes the electrical interface, the protocol, and the timing. Uh, to sum it up and to give, you know, like just the bullet points context, uh, it is uh, SDI 12 is short for serial digital interface at 1200 volts. So it's a very slow communication protocol. It is old, a lot of quotes there, because it was born or standardized in the late 80s. Uh, a lot of 90s kids here. No, we are not old. Um, and the whole uh, why this uh, happened or the reason why this was developed is so that um, to be used mainly in agriculture for field monitoring or like big area monitoring. Uh, the idea is to have a low power sensor network, which in the late 80s was mainly wired. Uh, the idea is to have only one data logger and to that we can hook up up to 62 disclaimer sensors in the same data line. 62 only if they are low power sensors, which is only the most modern ones, but it can, you know, even the older or the first version ones can uh, hold up, I think it's like 10, 20 sensors. And um, these sensors are uh, multi-parameter. So like, yeah. So the mm, picture on the top is essentially like a very rough, connection diagram that uh, is provided in the SDI 12 standard documentation. It's a uh, very nice, dense, but nice, um, where you can see essentially that we have one data recorder or data logger, and then we hook up everything to the three main wires that uh, drive all of this. And in the picture down below is one of the sensors uh, from one manufacturer. To be honest, I don't remember right now which manufacturer it is. Uh, but you can see it has like three probes. Uh, this means that uh, these sensors can have uh, several or can measure several parameters, which is really convenient when you're trying to monitor the um, state of the soil, like the humidity, the temperature. Um, I think it can also track um, pH. And yeah, I'm still getting familiar with exactly what parameters it can, it can uh, measure. And then the latest version is uh, from 2017, but it has uh, been uh, improved, you know, like a bit here and there with no, nothing new added, but uh, I think it's mainly rewording some of the paragraphs so that it's easier to understand. And the latest uh, version uh, is from 2019. Uh, all of these versions are backwards compatible. That means that no matter if the sensor or the data logger has been developed uh, uh, following the standard of the like, you know, version 1.0 or 1.2 1.3, all of them are going to be, you know, um, can be used at the same time. Um, then the requirements, you know, trying to break it down to the main uh, basic things are, so electrically we need uh, 12, volt power line. So the whole thing is powered by 12 volts. And then the data line, uh, it uh, works in five volts. And of course, we have the uh, ground line. The, you know, the thing starts getting trickier when it's neg negative logic, negative logic. Um, and then, yeah, we will get back to the whole struggle uh, about this later. Then the protocol characteristics are that it has a specific 
uh, command set, uh, similar to the 80 commands with uh, all four uh, wireless uh, communication modules. Uh, the communications is, are driven by the data logger. So the data logger is the one that is demanding information from sensor A or B or C. And uh, it is, uh, has the capability of reprogramming the sensors directly from the data logger. Okay, so this is essentially like a screenshot of how this works. Now, pros and cons. Why would I want to use this uh, super old standard? First of all, it allows for a lot of modularity, uh, which means that I can, you know, it gives me a lot of flexibility to change sensors if I want. Uh, I don't need to recalibrate them. I can recalibrate them if I want, but I don't need to. Uh, so I can easily exchange a couple sensors and, you know, I have a new feature, a new parameter that I can, that I can measure. Uh, the sensors and the data loggers can be uh, developed independently. That means that I can, uh, I don't know, upgrade my data logger without changing every single one of the sensors that I have over a, like, I don't know, super big area. Uh, all the versions are compatible with, between them, as I already said, that is like super convenient. And then again, multi-parameters, uh, multi-parametric sensors, and all the system is powered from the same source. That means that, okay, yeah, it can, you know, as long as you have some redundancy with the, with the powering so that, you know, it's, it keeps alive, uh, we're good. It's either functioning or not functioning. There is no sensor activeness without the data logger. Then the cons part, which is, you know, the struggling part, because it's a wired sensor network that, you know, uh, it allows, uh, okay, I'm going to talk in meters, so sorry for the imperial people, uh, but you can have, a, I think it's 10 sensors with 60 meter long cable, which is a lot of cable when we are talking in these kind of systems. So we cannot just dismiss the energy that we are losing in the wires or the impedance that this has created with, you know, when we are changing from high to low in the voltage for the data line, yes, that can be a problem. Um, so, yeah, we need to take into account the energy loss, uh, loss and all the parts need protection from the phantom voltage that we can have in the system when we are turning it on or off. And then, you know, funny stuff, uh, on boot, when the system is uh, turned on, it's waking up all the sensors at the same time. So all the sensors are going to demand a uh, power and are going to, you know, yeah, we'll get into the, the fact that they are all going to talk at the same time. Uh, so then the data logger or the system needs to be able to provide enough power to, you know, sustain that without damaging any of the parts. And again, the negative logic. Um, so now, the new tech, in my case, uh, benefits of working at Arduino, I'm going to use, or I'm using the Portenta H7. The um, thing with the new tech, or yeah, the, the, the trend with the, with the new electronics, as you probably already know, is that, yes, of course, we started with 12 volts, but we are moving towards 5 volts, 3.3, 2.5, probably even lower, because we want to have as low power as possible, because then, yeah, we're using less energy, you know, batteries last longer, etc. Uh, here I summed up essentially the parts of the Portenta that are convenient for me, for my project. Uh, so that means essentially like, yeah, you can change the Portenta for whatever, which board you want to use. Um, I tried to, so yeah, sum it up. Uh, so it's working in 3.3 volts operating voltage as most of the boards nowadays. Then it has a bunch of UR ports. I'm going to get into detail on how many I'm gonna use uh, in the project later on. And the uh, characteristics of these UR ports is that they use standard logic, so active high, yes, first warning there. Uh, then the idle state is high versus SDI 12, which is everything is, yeah, negative, negated, and, you know, fun stuff. From SDI 12, remember the previous, yeah, back to previous slide, uh, it has, you know, three wires, you know, power ground and one data line. This one has two, RX and TX, fun stuff. And then uh, in my case, I'm gonna use the high density connector, although it's not strictly necessary for, yeah, what I wanna do. 
Uh, so, you know, the bridging, the, the part that connects old and new. This is essentially uh, my quick uh, check table on where we are and how I'm, you know, the, the approach towards solving it. Um, so SDI 12, characterized by using, you know, level-wise, we have SDI 12 uses five volts for the data communication. UART and most of electronics use 3.3. Then, you know, easy, we can just have a level shifter, you know, put everything on the same, or you know, bring down the, the data towards 3.3 and we're good, okay. Then data bus wise, we have one wire in SDI 12 versus two pins, RX and TX. Okay, what can we do? We just duplicate the signal, we're good. No problem, easy. Then logic, yes, uh, negative to positive. Okay, we just invert it, fun. Uh, but we need to do all these three at the same time. And that's when, you know, like sweat uh, starts dropping. Um, yeah, that, that's a picture of a very early prototype just to make sure that the uh, sensor worked, uh, but it's not working, that one. Uh, so documentation. Yes, uh, there's been a couple of talks already regulated and mentioning documentation. Please document your stuff. Uh, first picture is the um, connection uh, suggestion uh, from the SDI 12 standard documentation. As you can see, it's fairly nice. In my case, I'm only checking the data logger part. I'm not gonna get into the sensors creation or anything. Um, and then there is uh, two very super useful resources that I've found. That is the first picture of there. It's uh, from a paper released by Los Alamos. I will you know, the last slide is one of, with all the, the links and the resources, if anyone wants to check. And it's a very simple, you know, we duplicate the signal, then we have, you know, Rx and Tx, and then we have one direction bit so that we can select a, where do we want the signal to go, and we are negating on the way, so all good. And then the third, or yeah, a third uh, source, or the, the third picture, uh, then there in the bottom, is a, by, some other paper that I don't remember, remember the name, but it's listed uh, from someone that has uh, connected successfully uh, these SDI 12 sensors to a Raspberry Pi. It's not exactly what I'm trying to do uh, because if I'm understanding correctly by the, the information they shared, they ended up not using UART per se, but it's a very, very useful uh, connection idea suggestion so that you know you can also take into account all the impedance and all the other things that i talked about before okay so we are set on this then software this part is easy uh the protocol is very clear it's very well explained everything is in the standard documentation um then you know that image of the uh, algorithm is uh, the, the flowchart is also provided in the SDI 12 documentation. That's perfect, super useful. Uh, to be honest, I haven't started with this part. I'm still, you know, fighting with the hardware. Uh, so it looks easy. It's just okay. From the pin level, we just need to, you know, manage the UART and then one enabling, uh, disabling pin. Cool. And then from the pinware level, we just need to turn all that algorithm into functions, into a library, and then we're good. Uh, no, not really. Uh, that's the part where I cried, no. Um, so yeah, uh, some, some sensor manufacturers, it's not a standard, they did this because they wanted to see me suffer. Uh, so they, they, you know, when you boot the sensors, they say uh, like, hello world, where they are essentially uh, shouting in the, or not shouting, but yeah, saying in the data line, like, hey, this is my model number, this is my firmware version, I'm ready to go. Uh, which is nice, if you have one sensor, it's very useful information. Uh, not if you have 10 at the same time, in the same data bus. So, uh, all cool, no problem, we can handle this, right? No. <laughs> it's another protocol, it's another freaking protocol. Uh, okay, at least we are in the same same bold rate, you know, I'm happy, but it uses positive logic. Uh, yeah, that's the, you know, like the, the 
uh, blue screen of death in Windows. That was me when I learned about this. Um, but at least it's like super specified also. Uh, in this case, it's by the manufacturers in the manual. So, you know, document your stuff. Um, it's, uh, yeah, so, you know, like it doesn't wait for, well, it waits for 100 milliseconds, but the moment that you have power, it will send its message and then it will, you know, switch and flip uh, for SDI 12 ready. That means that the sensor is going to be listening and waiting for a ping from the data logger to say like, hey, can you please tell me your information? Uh, okay, so remember this? We have this now also. Uh, no problem, we can still level shift, all good. No problem, we can still duplicate, No, pr all good. But, but the negative, positive, positive part where you need to only negate the SDI 12, is when, yeah, that's why I'm saying like I'm still fighting with the hardware because the moment that we started uh, testing this, then we realized about the DDI. Uh, so I'm gonna focus on the earlier, like a super easy diagram up there. And this is what I did. Oh, it's very hard to see because it's gray and instead of blue. But the idea is, uh, okay, we have SDI 12 and DDI in the same data line. So we are, of course, like duplicating and having our own SDI 12 management module section thingy. Uh, but then we are also like duplicate before the duplication for the SDI 12 so that we can get the information from the DDI part uh, to the UART, another UART port. So it's You know, okay, system boot, let's do a round check and see if everyone is okay, everyone is doing fine. And, you know, you can know essentially which one of your sensors you need to replace. Uh, but we need, yeah, all these things um, to, to make it happen. Uh, the software wise, okay, not much complication. We only need to add the specific small function version for the DDI boot. We're good. Uh, again, I haven't started with this. So, you know, maybe next talk I give will be about solely the software part, but it's, uh, it's you know, problem for future Judith. We're fine. Um, yeah, and that's it. That's my struggle. Uh, here are all the references. Uh, is the total specification uh, organization. Uh, the second one is the one from Los Alamos that had, you know, tried a couple of uh, hardware options and uh, reached the very simple negating uh, part and the rest is a bunch of other people that have used or tried to do a similar thing for better or worse uh, or my you know conclusion outcome for this is uh, since it's a sensor a system used mainly for agriculture a lot of the people that have tried this come from an agricultural engineering perspective they are not familiar with electronics engineering uh, programming embedded systems so that means that uh, they cannot really get into the into deep to to fix all these minor things most of the solutions that i've already found are not necessarily from the open source community but related to uh, bachelor theses or master's degree theses um, and they end up handling everything through gpio through interrupts so instead of using uart yeah they are doing it a, bit, a very like a bit rougher way uh, and that's a wrap. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed.